Nobody wanted to take the Jews in World War II. Why? Because the Jews had been demonized, right? Nobody wanted to take them. They, they were the troublemakers. Well, who wants to take a group of Syrian refugees? Is Europe going to do it? Is Europe going to take all of them? Europe is a fiscal disaster zone. And they've already overpromised all of their handouts and the cars are burnings in the streets because people aren't getting their free stuff. They're not going to be able to support any immigrants now, let alone millions. So the Syrians are leaving. Here's Iraq, here's Iran, here's Syria, here's Jordan, here is Israel all by herself. Libya's on fire, Egypt's on fire, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Greece, everybody's on fire. But what's happening is Syria is saying, you know what, uh, we just got to get over here to Greece. But Greece isn't any better off than war-torn Syria. There's little food, there's no medicine for refugees, even that. If you remember, we told you this would happen about two years before it did. We said, look for the rise of the Nazi party again. Well, it came in Greece, named the Golden Dawn Party. They are violently anti-immigrant. They're actually packing Syrian refugees now into detention camps. This is not gonna end well. They stay as hidden as possible because they fear the anti-immigrant violence from the Nazis in Greece. So since the conflict began, 11,000 Syrians have been arrested for, for doing this, crossing into the border of Greece without permission. But why? Why should anyone care about their borders? The entire region is being destabilized. Now here's what's amazing to me. President um, uh, Assad, who's a really bad guy, he was giving a, um, a interview for Germany, a German newspaper. He said yesterday the things that I told you two years ago and then reiterated three weeks ago about all of these lines, all of the maps being withdrawn. Listen to what he said, quote, taking a stone arch out of the keystone, that's Syria. The entire sheet is falling apart. Each playing with the borders in the region means to withdraw the map. This is a domino effect that no one could control. It may be that one of the major powers initiates this process. That would be us guys. But no one will be able to stop this process at a certain point. We talked about the domino effect back on Fox. Do you remember the chalkboard? Oh, I was mocked. I was ridiculed for the chalkboard. But there it is. There it is. That is exactly what's happening now. And I'm begging you, I, I can tell you the solution. I know how to fix it. Please, please, please tell your friends to open up their minds. You know, no one ever calls out the mockers for being wrong. They're content to can just continue to divide at a time when we need to be united. America, I'm begging you, we must unite now. History is beginning to repeat itself. In Europe, there is a very strong radical movement towards just erasing all religion. They are seeking to stamp out what re little religious influence remains at all in the EU. An archbishop explained, he said, quote, there's a movement in the European Union that wants total religious neutrality and can't accept our Christian traditions. In the build-up to World War II, the same movement happened. It happened in Europe and it happened here. It was the state competing with religion as the moral authority. And eventually, nudge came to push and shove came to shoot. That's the way it works. Here in Russia, Stalin. He imprisoned thousands of religious leaders while the churches were closed. Nearly 40,000 Christian churches were closed. 25,000 mosques were closed down and converted into theaters and schools and warehouses. Church bells were melted down for scrap metal. By 1939, only one in 40 churches were still functioning as a church. He replaced the churches with icons, pictures, statues, propaganda of himself. Everyone, children were taught that Stalin was the wisest of the age. We actually have a publication upstairs at the League of Militant Atheists, which he established in 1924. This is a flyer from it. Nine years later, they had 5.5 million members. Prior to World War II, Hitler did the same thing. He did it in Germany. So you had the communists, and then you had the other competing idea, the National Socialist. We were doing freedom. But they did communism and national socialism. And the Nazis promoted a positive Christianity. They claimed it would restore Christian morality because it had fallen into a sinkhole. Well, privately, he despised Christianity in his writings 
he talked about how Christianity and National Socialism weren't compatible. He said, we'll see to it that the churches can't spread abroad teachings in conflict with the interest of the state. In Hitler's ministers for religious affairs said this positive Christianity was not dependent on faith in Christ, but rather faith in the Nazi party. Quote, the Fuhrer is the herald of a new revelation. They were trying to make the churches, hear me carefully, National Socialists tried to make the churches an instrument of Nazi policy. So he, att he attacked the German Catholic churches with propaganda, calling them disloyal, havens of corruption. People were forced to answer to the authorities on why they had betrayed the regime. Any of this sound, any, at all, anything? By 1939, more than 10,000 Catholic schools had been closed. The kids had to go to public school, the Nazi public schools. It was mass secularism, a total rejection of God. And I find it interesting, first of all, back to the flag in Europe, that there are, there are 12 tribes of Israel, 12 little stars on their flag. And how many times have we seen the yellow star used before? How many times have we seen them sewn onto people's clothing? I fear. Unfortunately, America, we may see them again. We have the same problems that were infected the world back at the turn of the century. Unfortunately, it's happening here too. God is being driven out of the public square. God is openly mocked and hedonism and darkness is being embraced. We can't see that all men have rights. All men have rights to different opinions. You don't have to agree with me. I have a right to say it. And I shouldn't be spied on for saying it. Progressives have an advanced society. You see, they have distanced us from ourselves, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, our constitution, our basic inalienable rights. And most importantly, they have distanced us from God.